So as the country moves towards unlocking its nationwide lockdown, we too have to get back to business slowly but surely. My name is Divya Patel and I am managing international sales at Messe Frankfurt Mumbai office, mainly LED Expo and Light India portfolio. Again, a very warm welcome to everybody. So today we will understand the dynamics of intelligent lighting and controls. I would like to introduce the industry experts with us here. They're going to guide us on the opportunities that lie ahead. We have Mr. Ramakrishnan Puranam. He is the Senior General Manager for Smart and Connected Lighting at Wipro Lighting. We have Ms. Sadeshna Mukhopadhyay. She's the Chief Design Officer and the founding team member at Swarochi. We have Mr. Hendrik Nedelskovich. He is the Managing Director at Easy Lux Asia Limited. And we have Mr. Girish Tikchandani, Director at Redcart. Also, a, a special thanks to Mr. Biju John, Managing Director, ITWIS Innovations and founder of Roshni Bazaar, who will be the moderator for today's session. His deep technical expertise and hardworking mentality was, will help us all today. I would also like the attendees to ask their questions in the Q&A section at the bottom of your screen. Once the presentation starts, the chat box will be disabled. So please make sure you put up all your questions and our panelists will be very happy to answer them at the end of the session. And before we dive into it, uh, I just want to set the tone right for today's webinar. Donna, can we have the first polling question, please? Guys, there's going to be a question that's going to come up on your screen and there's going to be 30 seconds. I request everyone to just cast their vote there. Perfect. So what, what I really want to know is in the current pandemic scenario, will smart lighting gain its due momentum? I hope everyone can see the question and, you know, and cast your votes there. Just wait for another 10 seconds to get the results. Oh, that's great. So 84% uh, think that smart light is now going to get, uh, you know, its momentum, the much, you know, deserved momentum. So that's perfect. We know we are going to discuss uh, uh, something that's right, that's going to help us in the future. Over to you, Mr. John. Thank you. Thank you, Divya. Um, thank you, Ms. Frankfurt, for considering the much needed uh, subject for uh, today's seminar. It's uh, intelligent lighting and uh, smart lighting. Of course, both intelligent lighting and uh, smart lighting uh, is uh, an important part of uh, IoT world. We all know that. And uh, just uh, some basic uh, about IoT for the beginners. And we all know that uh, IoT stands for uh, Internet of Things. Today, uh, we are um, at uh, an internet where humans interact with each other humans and message, uploads, downloads, everything is happening in today's internet. Think about uh, things are doing the same thing in internet. So this is what uh, 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 internet of things all about. So tomorrow or maybe today's world, you can see things communicating each other. A sensor is communicating to a light fixture, a light fixture is communicating to another device. So these type of communications between things happens in the world of uh, IoT. And of course, like we human beings use some languages for uh, communication, uh, things also use uh, certain languages for uh, communication, which is popularly uh, known as the protocols. So we have uh, protocols. It can be either, the communication can be either wired or wireless. So you name the protocol, there are many. DALI, ZigBee, LoRaWAN, IP500, NPIoT, uh, Z-Wave, you know, there are n number of protocols and even the India made customized SL bus like uh, protocol also are available. So there are many protocols to communicate uh, uh, 
uh, each other. So let's start today's discussion. Today we have uh, industry experts uh, uh, with us to share their knowledge and views regarding intelligent and smart lighting. I'm sure they will address the enormous possibilities uh, of intelligent lighting and uh, IoT. So uh, we have uh, Mr. Ramakrishna Puranam with us. Uh, Ramki is the head of uh, uh, IoT uh, at uh, Vipro Lighting. Uh, uh, Vipro is the one who introduced a new concept called IOL, which is getting very popular, Internet of uh, uh, Lighting. I understand that Ramki is going to talk about uh, the trends in intelligent lighting and uh, IoT. Love to hear you, Ramki. Over to you. Hey, thank you very much, John. Thanks for setting the pace. Uh, thanks, Divya. And, uh, Thanks, Mr. Frankfurt and uh, Roshni Bazaar for uh, giving us this opportunity to share some insights. Um, so I will sort of jump to the topic of discussion today. Can all of you see my screen? As it comes up. Yes. Let me put on the slideshow mode. This is clear. Fantastic. So we're going to talk a little about uh, trends in intelligent lighting and uh, Vijay John gave a fantastic introduction about Internet of Things. It's not um, human beings talking to each other, but things talking to each other, right? I call it as the Internet of Everything, right? In this uh, current context. So let me set the pace by talking about uh, a few things which are happening as we uh, start unlocking digital transformation. It's all around us right now, regardless of sector you are in. Uh, be it education, be it offices, be it healthcare. Uh, suddenly, there is an acceleration on this front. Everybody who had never considered digital is now looking at digital for the reasons which are completely known. Um, multiple things, uh, the human interface, uh, human interactions have started coming down because of lockdowns, uh, but still uh, the business is as usual. We have to ensure business continuity. Ensuring customer experiences are intact in the new world uh, is going to be made possible by digital, right? Um, as we speak, uh, there are a lot of things changing around us in terms of how the business models are getting deployed, how things are moving around. A lot of things now moving uh, in, the, uh, in the current world from a capital intensive to more per usage. Right? I'll put it as XAAS, okay? anything as a service. Okay? That model, I think, is something which is going to sweep us in the times to come. And uh, most importantly, I think uh, uh, human interactions are going to be uh, super important for us. Uh, they're not going to go away. Empowering people to work together, collaborate together, even in a current pandemic situation like this, and ensuring that innovation still come out from the organizations which are investing in that is going to be very important. So that's the reason the topic of discussion today uh, is uh, intelligent uh, lighting and IoT, and buildings are going to play a very, very important role in ensuring this kind of a transformation. Uh, let's look at uh, what the digital building uh, represents from an IoT, Internet of Things uh, perspective as an opportunity. Um, we are using multiple technologies right now. Uh, Biju mentioned about uh, a lot of three-letter, four-letter words with all due credits, the DALIs and the KNXs, and uh, uh, there are LoRa's, uh, different kinds of protocols. Uh, those are the technologies which are happening. Some are wired, some are wireless. Power Ethernet is, again, a wired technology. Uh, but uh, really, if you look at it, uh, uh, what is causing the disruption in the, in the current scenario I have put uh, the, the central piece as a smart lighting part of it. That's the one which is really going to cause a disruption and find a lot of other things which are there in a building together from a data collection perspective and uh, not only the lighting part of it, but also the beyond lighting scenario. And most important aspect is once people start getting back to offices, there is a little bit of a new normal which gets established. Um, obviously, people have to feel safe and they have to make sure that they're able to deliver the same kind of performance what they were doing it before uh, COVID-19 happened. So workforce experience is going to be very, very critical uh, going forward. So what are the impacts and where are the true costs? Uh, this is a very simple slide. I'll put it as a 440, 400 model. Uh, the denomination can be anything. It can be dollar, it can be pound, it can be Indian rupees. But uh, typically what tends to happen is uh, a lot of effort goes on the left-hand side of the scale, which is the four, which is in terms of optimizing energy. Um, no doubts, I think there has to be focus on that. But what gets missed because of you know, excessive focus on the left-hand side of the scale is that you know, majority of the times from a lighting perspective, we tend to miss the bus on the right-hand side. 
which is a 400, which is delivering the human experience. Um, we need to now stitch the story together uh, in terms of making sure that the energy saving story is, in, is intact, but we are still able to deliver a fantastic experience to people who attend offices, who work out of building. And the central piece is the building piece, which is where the second largest cost bucket is standing, the 40 part of it. So four is the energy you spend per square foot, and 40 is the amount you, uh, you spend on the rent part of it, right, uh, primarily. And 400 is uh, your uh, salaries, your staffing part of it, okay, employee cost. So if you look at it, uh, a lot more focus uh, from an intelligent lighting perspective and IoT perspective has to be encompassing on the right hand side and the approach more has to be on the right to left, not on the left to right. We will talk about it in terms of what it can do. Um, future looks exciting. I think pandemic is not going to go away anytime soon, uh, but still there will be some answers and all of us will get adapted to the new normal, the way we work and the way we live. Definitely things will change around us. And uh, the most important aspect out here is once people start coming back to workplaces, a lot of uh, systems which are siloed systems, which are not talking to each other, uh, now is the time we need to stitch the story together and make sure that we are able to have a connectivity between the sensors, connectivity between the systems, and uh, each of these protocols, right, they, they have to be an open protocol to be able to share information with the other system, right? So that's the most important aspect we are looking at. Uh, business drivers guiding transformation buildings, I think uh, six buckets, if you can put it, <laughs> put it uh, in a very straightforward manner. The first five are the arrows going up, and the sixth one is a classical arrow, which is the cost which has to go down. Uh, let's talk about it. I think security is going to be super important. Uh, the internet security, because IoT, we will talk about it, uh, is also vulnerable uh, in case the measures are not taken. We've got to make sure that security aspect is addressed. Um, we have, we've been talking about the experience part of it. What are new experience we can deliver uh, to the people once they get back to offices or when they get back to their work. Uh, asset utilization, uh, the space is now going to shrink because of physical distancing norms being put in place. It is now six feet right, 1.83 meters, and then number of seats in a building will definitely go down. So we definitely need to understand um, how each of these areas, for example, the desks or the meeting rooms or breakout areas, each of these areas are getting used in a particular office. That's going to be super important. Energy, needless to say, will play a pivotal role. And compliance to building codes is going to be, again, uh, one of the important factors. But while we put all five pieces together, the sixth piece always has to come down so that the adoption of intelligent technologies, intelligent lighting, IoT goes up. If the cost also keeps going up, then I don't think we will have a scenario of you know, smart lighting or intelligent lighting getting adopted by many people. So we, we need to, uh, as industry people, I think we need to look at changing this particular scenario. Uh, looking at some of the um, user experiences, um, very, very nice, so simple slides. So the person comes out here, what he's doing is uh, trying to change uh, the lighting scenario, both in terms of intensity and in terms of color. Just look at it, right? Most of it is now app-based. We don't want people to be touching a lot of stuff once they get back. So mobile first is once again going to be one of the mantras as we move into the you know, COVID-19 times. So here he's able to change the first intensity of the light. Lights have come up and now he doesn't like the warm appearance. He has tuned the light uh, to blue color. Um, obviously, I mean, there is a incidence of natural light which is available. Uh, he's able to utilize that and uh, the IoT sensors, multi-sensors, um, my colleagues, the other panelists are going to talk about it a little bit. Uh, they give a lot of information beyond lighting, including the temperature part of it. And uh, if you move forward on this, the whole idea is to be able to adapt the new environment to pursue differences. Personalization, control, and making sure that there is a flexibility in the way you work out of the offices and buildings is going to be the key now. Moving forward, I touched upon the cost aspect. Costs have to come down, but we, have, we also have to start looking at the cost as a total cost of ownership and not just as a simple one-time capex investment. There has to be a change and shift in attitude on every side, okay, both from the customer side and also from the manufacturer side. Uh, how do we do that uh, from a solution perspective? Daylight harvesting is going to be important. And uh, once you are able to uh, get a visibility, granular visibility of every light fixture, every sensor, and the sensor is exchanging information with the other subsystems, then obviously, I mean, a lot of things can happen. And from a facilities manager, real estate uh, head perspective, he gets a complete visibility of the layout in terms of, you know, where people are, how lights are there, and how people are moving around the spaces. This is going to be uh, very important. So from a facilities management perspective, he can do uh, the complete facilities management using a centrally managed network-based software. 
and uh, users also can utilize a lot of controls from a personalization perspective. It's going to be a good marriage. And if we implement any of this, I will not touch, touch upon wired or wireless because I mean both can work depending on what situation you are in. But regardless of that, uh, it can definitely lead to a significant uh, reduction in the cost of energy. Uh, workplace analytics, all the more important at this point in time in terms of how people are consuming spaces, how people are moving around, uh, how the smart sensors can help you is uh, they give you the data about the paths traveled, different areas being used by the people. Obviously, heat maps are one way to analyze uh, where concentration of people is happening, where people are congregating, then obviously alerts and uh, you know, notifications can be sent to decongest the space. Uh, reallocate the spaces, especially now, uh, now that the number of seats or uh, overall area is going to come down because of physical distancing, uh, space also has to be utilized in a much more effective manner. So that's, uh, that's what uh, the lighting can do. The sensors attached to lighting help you achieve those outcomes. And the most important thing is we should be in a position to give safety and security and the feeling of well-being and uh, health to people who return to the offices. Because now we are asking them to shift from a WFH, a work from home scenario, uh, to get back to the office and collaborate with the colleagues and have a sense of culture, sense of organization culture, sense of belonging. So buildings are going to play a very, very central pivotal role. And uh, a lot of IoT sensors will give you these kind of outcomes. So that's my uh, uh, short presentation on IoT and how smart sensors, a smartification of lighting can help moving forward. And uh, I request my other co-panelists now to take over uh, Biju. Thank you, Ramki. Uh, uh, 440 for something very interesting. <laughs> and, uh, we'll talk about it, Biju. <laughs> and uh, you really said it. Uh, something which everyone is looking into is uh, data security, yeah. which is a major point of discussion. And of course, the, the need of a protocol open protocol for interfaces. Yes. Yes. This is another challenge uh, which industry is going to face. Correct. Thank you, Ramki. It was really exciting. So moving uh, forward, uh, we, uh, the industry, lighting industry and the automation industry is uh, preferring both uh, wired and uh, wireless solutions for uh, intelligent uh, lighting. For sure, uh, it depends uh, uh, on the application suitability. But uh, wireless technology is something which uh, uh, industry uh, uh, love to hear about. So we have uh, Ms. Sudeshna Mukhabadeya with us, who is an expert in uh, IoT. She is uh, having a lot of ideas. She will give us more insight on uh, wireless smart technology application in the post-COVID uh, era. Over to you, Sudeshna. Hey, thank you, Biju, for the introduction. Uh, very quickly, I'll talk about the, uh, I hope I'm audible. Uh, so very quickly, I'll be talking about, uh, you know, the wireless technologies. Uh, basically, the renewed opportunity in small and medium uh, indoor spaces. Uh, Ramki talked about, you know, the large buildings and uh, how the technologies can adapt to, smart technologies to be adapted in uh, large uh, buildings. My presentation is going to be more on the small and medium spaces because that's also a large footprint in the Indian uh, scenario. You know, in the new normal area, what's changed? Everything has changed for us and everything has changed extremely quickly. Uh, we are living in an area which is uh, quite uncertain. There's fear and anxiety. Uh, we are hearing new words. Touch and uh, contact is the new taboo. Uh, distancing is a new word which we are talking about, physical distancing, uh, social distancing is a little weird, but of course distancing is a new word which is coming integral to our space itself. At the same time, there are some things nice which is also happening. I think we become extremely adaptable. You know, three months down the line, our entire life has changed. We are still existing. We are talking technology. We are all connected together. New skills we have all started learning. And what's very, very interesting for us and, you know, the context of it, I think there is a mass foray into adapting digital technologies. You know, people uh, pe who were not so uh, very comfortable with technology, you see what has happened in the education sector. Even primary schooling has moved into online teaching in less than three months. I mean, I think that's a huge, huge adaptation and adoption of new technology. 
and of course nature seems to have refreshed around us uh, in between we saw the fury of nature as well but we've been seeing the goodness of the nature all around us over here this brings us uh, to a very positive setting that yes digitization smart lighting probably this is the right time or the right inflection moment where we will see growth in these areas what are the anticipated trends in various applications you know all of us have been attending various webcasts uh, as participating in various panel discussions in india in global forum i've just collated what i've been hearing from experts all over working space and office design definitely will undergo and change well being will be of primal importance uh, there is something new which i have been talking about i think we might get into lonely office syndrome if you are not adapting it properly you know we are talking about distancing and i was hearing about some colleagues uh, and some of my friends in large industries four people sitting in an office which was earlier occupied by 40 people how do we mitigate such lonely office syndrome hygiene and personal well being will be important immense flexibility in design and i'm talking about not only furniture design but even lighting design how do we quickly adapt from an open seating lighting solution to a personalized space lighting solution large meeting rooms to smaller meeting rooms more video conferencing provisions so a lot of things we will see uh, being changing in the workspaces in the offices in the retail segment of course this is uh, still emerging but what we could guess from many of the large brands i think there would be consolidation and growth of brand experience store customer visits may be by appointment e-commerce will be used for for fulfillment but shopping in the real shopping way may also go a change in the residential area i think all of us have seen the change i'm you know doing the webcast from my home and i know from a social my study area i have now converted it into an office area and my lighting system uh, you know has also had to go of some changes because you need more vertical lighting for video conferencing in the residence space the same space to be multitasking we need to create the fun relaxing zones in our offices because outdoor activity is going to get limited how do i convert my home to a gym to bar a restaurant or a play zone and my talk is going to be more of smart lighting so if i really see and consolidate all this time it is evident that lighting controls which was there all over for last 20 years is going to get more intelligent and i think there will be shift to more simpler protocols i am not saying that the wired system will disappear not at all the wired system whether it's a poe system or a dali system probably will be more adapted for larger spaces in the smaller spaces we will see adoption of the wireless technology because they are more easily configurable there are smart interfaces i think that will become a much more trendier in these spaces so from a a much more intense engineered solution the wireless system offers the users a simple uh, installation simple interfaces and a choice of protocols which can be easily configurable so wireless smart lighting system as it exists today it's a fast and rapidly evolving subject as we speak we see a lot of new technologies or new platforms being introduced uh, it is it gives the users a lot of opportunities you can have automatic operations light scheduling light sensor and i think my uh, co panelists will be talking about them a lot of personalized interface as ramki was uh, mentioning i think personalized lighting controls personalized interfaces from the hygiene point of view will become very important i clean my own mobile i clean my own remote control and therefore i would like to use them to control my light probably control my you know entertainment system curtains everything so personalized interfaces and controls will see much more adoption with smart lighting and specifically wireless lighting the flexibility is enormous because you don't need to pre engineer today i want white light i can have white light in 2 hours from now i want to change it i want to rezone my light regroup my light so whether it was a large office in the morning and in the afternoon i want to make it into five smaller offices 
it's extremely easy to regroup. It is an enormous potential to improve well-being, dynamic and tunable lighting. Of course, it is possible also with wired solution, and it is now possible with wireless solution. But what I think is going to be the tipping point for quick adoption is a fast and easy installation of these systems. No complex engineering, no additional wiring. You don't need any special panels. Everything is, the intelligence is integrated into the lighting system itself and you can easily reconfigure. That means I can reconfigure my light every hour if I want to do it. So this is really the time specifically for small, medium offices, small, medium homes, uh, small, medium homes by all residential spaces, uh, boutiques, you know, uh, personalized, uh, any social spaces, the wireless smart lighting solutions adoption, I think it's the right time for you know the adoption of such technology. There are a lot of protocols, we do talked about it. The most three common protocols which we are seeing where the solution is available in the market, we have Zigbee, the Bluetooth mesh and Wi-Fi. Each has its own you know, pros and cons. Uh, Zigbee is quite widely used protocol for home lighting. It needs a hub though and about 50 to 60 devices can be controlled. If I talk about Bluetooth mesh, it's extremely independent. You can control large number of points because it works on a mesh technology. The best part of it is it's not dependent on your internet performance. So it's sort of an intranet sort of system, extremely energy efficient because the, it's low energy. BLE is Bluetooth low energy. Wi-Fi, of course, is extremely universal. Uh, if you adopt it for home, the number of points would depend or the performance would depend on your router. But we are quite hopeful that the router or home router technology is going to improve. And we have realized now that how important internet connectivity is in today's digital world, especially in the, you know, in the pandemic and the post pandemic. So home routers will be more efficient. So probably Wi-Fi adoption will be more, uh, prevalent than what it is today. The, one of the issues in Wi-Fi is it is still high in parasitic power. Uh, hopefully, this is going to come down over the uh, months. Of course, there are privacy issues where validation is required. I think all manufacturers are very, very aware of this. So when they design systems, they make sure that they follow all the, uh, you know, the safety protocols. The quick adoptions of wireless uh, platform of course, there are many things. The robustness of the technology has to be there. And I think this is also the right time where we have seen in the last few years evolving evolution of various uh, wireless platforms, and it has become much more robust than what it was. It has to be affordable, flexible, extremely simple to use, simple to configure, simple to install, simple to operate. And of course, people now in the industry needs to now build a portfolio on wireless platform. This technology cannot be adopted or cannot be existed with only one product. We do see manufacturers introducing bulk, but if you see in today's home, uh, it is quite a downlight driven uh, you know, design or wall mounts or decorative lighting. So each manufacturer uh, needs to build the entire portfolio to give a full lighting solution. And that's also going to facilitate quick adoption of wireless platform. As a lighting personnel for uh, 33 years, whatever we do, we need to make it locally relevant. And that's also going to speed up adoption. But uh, we are also seeing the wireless smart lighting industry is not going to exist in isolation. There is going to be lighting product, but there is going to be a lot of communication, application, uh, database management, security, firmware, app development. So the entire face of the lighting uh, industry is changing. And I think we are going to be in a much more collaborative space than what we were earlier new skills are coming into the lighting industry. Whatever we do in, you know, whether it is IoT, whether it is, you know, smart technologies, wired, wireless protocol, we have to remember as an industry, all what we are doing is for the human. My next colleague in the panel is going to talk about human-centric lighting. So no matter what the technology is, it has to fulfill two things. It has to be human-centric solutions, 
and it has to be nature centric solution so we need to protect the nature we need to make the solution relevant for human well being and therefore then only this entire technology adoption we will see at a much higher speed and now i uh, hand it over to biju for our next speakers to continue on sharing their part of the technology thank you for tuning in uh, thank you so much uh, sudeshna it was very impressive thoughts i'm sure uh, there is much more to learn uh, from you uh, as an uh, expert in iot thank you so much uh, of course you addressed uh, uh, most of the point uh, which is very relevant uh, technology the result of every technology needs to be human centric no doubt about it and uh, the best part was uh, multitasking homes everyone needs to think about adding something more to existing uh, home facilities of course patch and uh, contact is uh, as two words which is uh, used these days because of this covid thing thank you very much uh, it was really exciting and uh, moving on uh, uh, it's always being said uh, that automation uh, starts with uh, uh, sensors so we have uh, uh, mr hendrik nadelskovic joining us today hendrik is the managing director of uh, easylux uh, europe uh, market leader for sensors and human centric uh, lighting uh hendrik is going to give us some more insight on uh, the role of sensors uh, in lighting automation and he's going to talk about uh, the human centric uh, lighting solutions over to you hendrik yeah thank you bitro for the introduction uh, thank you mesa frankfurt for organizing this event and uh, having me um let me share my screen to you i hope everybody can see my screen so Today I will talk about the role of uh, sensors in uh, lighting automation and uh, human centric lighting um, as a second topic. Um, therefore, I have uh, brought along five W's which I would like to discuss with you. First of all, I would like to clarify what is an intelligent lighting uh, control system? What is the role of sensors in lighting automation? what is human centric lighting it's a buzzword that's uh, around the industry i would like to bring a little bit clarity in that what is needed to achieve human centric lighting and what are the market potentials of uh, such technologies so what is an intelligent lighting control system um a lot of people believe that the feature of bluetooth connectivity between an iphone or or a smartphone with a light fixture and then giving the user the ability to adjust dim levels or uh, color temperature is uh, intelligent no from our point of view this is just an extended remote control an intelligent lighting system do automated controls and make decision based on the conditions in the room and thereby a user doesn't need necessarily to interact with the system this creates comfort for the user because things happening automatically in a smart way um that helps us to uh, save energy because lighting is only provided when it's actually needed and it can enhance our well-being um that's the human centric part that I will talk about uh, later in this presentation so making lighting or light intelligent means always to understand a bit about uh, sensor technology um for us as human beings no matter how intelligent we are uh, we rely on our senses hearing seeing tasting touching um smelling it basically the same for a, for a lighting system or for a building intelligence system the system needs data which it can works on which it can convert into automatic actions and those data is coming from sensors so sensors playing a critical crucial and tremendous role in an entire system sensors are the starting point for every lighting automation and later on they are enable us um for touchless lighting automation which is a very important topic post covid um sensors are preventing unnecessary energy consumption because they helping us to switch on the light or dim the light to a level only like it's needed and sensors um supporting well-being and comfort so what is the simple digital um lighting automation that you can have it's a standalone dali sensor 
combined with a light fitting, then you're probably adding a DALI relay. And by that, the sensor is already measuring daylight in the room. It's building, let's say, two groups of light fittings and giving you dim values um, towards each light value um, according to a set lux level in the room so that, that you have always the right, right, uh, the, the right light in the room without that the user needs to touch anything. And with a DALI relay, you even can switch air conditioning, for example, which leads me to the next point. What is the role of sensors beyond lighting? So nowadays we have multi-sensors. They incorporating a lot of sensors into one device. Um, that can be occupancy sensors combined with lighting uh, sensors, combined with temperature, humidity, or VOC air quality sensors. And all those data go then into a system that helps you um, to create the ideal situation in a room, optimal air quality, ideal temperature, and comfort lighting modes. So now we are taking that concept from a room to a building by connectivity and from there even to the internet. And that's then ultimately the internet of things. But what we need to remember, all the data that the system is converting comes from the sensors. So they play a crucial role in um, the future of intelligent lighting. So now let's uh, turn to the second topic. What is human-centric lighting? It's a buzzword which is around the industry already for a couple of years. Um, a lot of different uh, definitions are there. In general, what we should think about is we as a human being, we are older and our history is older than uh, electrical lighting. So we are conditioned to the sunlight, to the natural light, which gives us outside around 100,000 lux on a sunny day, 10,000 lux still on a cloudy day. But what is the actual situation nowadays? We are spending 90% of our time in enclosed spaces. Um, where we are under electrical light, and that's probably in an office at 500 lux. So obviously we are not getting enough light every day. Another thing is if we are comparing the natural light with electrical light, we're seeing that the uh, natural sunlight has dynamic changes throughout the day. So we're having a sunrise where we're um, seeing a red or, or orange sky. So we have a a warmer color temperature, a dimmed light towards the, the noon. Um, we have colder color temperatures and more brighter light. And then the whole process basically goes uh, towards the sunset where the light again becomes warmer and dimmed. And all this stimulates a hormone production in our body. And this is what our human body is set its internal clock um, with. So this is what often is referred as the circadian rhythm. So what we need to understand is there is a deviation between the natural light that we are getting outside and the electrical light that we are getting inside. So there is, the deviation is mainly in the intensity and as well as in the color temperature and the dynamics in which these two aspects are changing over the day. So what is needed to achieve human-centric lighting in an enclosed space? So basically what we can do with electrical lighting, we can um, dim it, so we can give different light intensity, and we can change um, color temperature with uh, tunable white uh, light fittings nowadays. But what make a human-centric control? A human-centric control should be geared to the circadian rhythm of the user. It should provide the right light at the right time of the day. So when we have the morning session and we have a warmer uh, light, it should be also a warmer CCT inside. When we have uh, the noon time, it should be a colder white. It should be brighter. It should be brighter than the 500 lux. And this should happen automatically and dynamic. So to achieve human-centric lighting, we need dynamic lighting control. We at EasyLux, believing with our own technology, SymbiLogic, into three uh, fundamental uh, parts. We are believing in demand-driven light management. That means there is a presence of motion detector that tells me, is somebody in the room or not? So light should be only provided 
if there's really somebody in the room, that's the energy uh, and the sustainability aspect. Then, of course, the dynamic changes of light. Um, do I get or do I provide enough um, light intensity? Do I provide the right CCT at the right time of the day? This is the biologic effect of the lighting. This is the dynamic light that we are providing. And then the third part is the constant light control, because we should remember one thing. The sunlight is the most um, or is the best light for us as a human being. So if there is enough sunlight in the room, we should dim down the electrical light to allow our um, human body to consume what is best for us and that's natural light. And the beauty is it saves energy at the same time. So let's have a look now into the market potentials. Um, researchers um, expecting the intelligent lighting market to be 30.6 billion US dollar by 2025. The biggest growing um, market section is the APEC region and they are mainly India and China. So India has a huge, huge potential for intelligent lighting. Key technology drivers will be sensor technologies because this is required for all intelligent lighting systems. Plus, post-pandemic demands like touchless uh, technologies. We don't want to touch uh, wall switches anymore because of hygiene aspects. Another very interesting part is that the human-centric lighting market is expected to reach 6 billion US dollar by 2025. So that means 20% of the intelligent lighting market will be human-centric lighting. There's a huge business potential in this human-centric uh, lighting technology as well. Yeah, thank you for being interesting in my conversation. Um, if you are having questions about our products in India, contact our um, partner, Itwas uh, Innovations. Um, link me up on LinkedIn, ask questions. I'm happy to answer everything. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Hendrik. Uh, it was really inspiring. Uh, Six billion US dollar by 2025. That's 20% of uh, intelligent lighting is going to be human centric. It's a good news for uh, all of us. And uh, you said uh, India has a huge potential uh, for uh, intelligent lighting. And sensors are going to play a very, very big role in terms of uh, uh, data collection and, of course, uh, a touchless lighting, which is a need of. Uh, today. Thank you so much. It was really inspiring. So moving forward, uh, integration uh, and uh, installation. This is something uh, which plays a major role uh, in intelligent lighting execution. So we have Mr. Uh, Girish uh, Tekchandani from uh, Redcut, who is an expert uh, uh, from uh, home automation segment. Uh, Mr. Girish is going to talk about uh, simplicity in installation and uh, user-friendly interfaces. Over to you, Mr. Girish. Thank you, Mr. John. Thank you, Divya. Thanks to Messi Frankfurt and Roshni Bazaar for conducting such a significant webinar. And absolutely, I feel it's the right time to do it. I will take on, I'll just share my screen. So as we all know, automation, I mean, the smart home automation that we are all talking about is more about creating an ecosystem. It is about building an ecosystem in which all the connected devices, the connected appliances, the connected lights can be operated with a single command of yours. I mean, that single command can be a touch on your panel, a touch on your mobile screen at voice command of yours. All these, I believe that's the real sense of automation. Automation, as we say, it's more about convenience rather than complexity. I mean, we've been into manufacturing of modular switches since past 24 years. We often come across a lot of interior designers and architects asking for the hassles that they would be facing or maybe, you know, sometimes when we meet the clients, every time they have a query in their mind that what if I install 
and what are going to be the hassles is it going to be i mean everyone upgrades their tv their mobile their car and all that but it's time everyone should think about installing these smart devices which will help us to lower our energy consumption but again that one thing that comes to their mind is the technology going to be messy is it going to be really costly the answer is no see today the automation that we have it that's a next generation automation in the market everyone is using lot of apps these days meetings are going virtual so it's been very simple to install these so in each and every house this is a typical switchboard that we have it you have line neutral wirings a basic this is a simple wiring that an electrician does so all you need to do is buy this kind of panels from the market these panels are available in various variants from different sizes starting from 2 module to 18 module that's the standard these are the standard sizes of the concealed boxes available in the market so irrespective whichever size of the box or the size of the modular plate is installed at your place all you need to do is find a suitable size of your panel and you can get these from the market these are again i'm repeating the word these are items which can be sold off the shelf so once you buy these panels all you need to do is replace your existing switchboards with your existing wirings going into these panels and then and there you are able to use it it's pretty simple installation practically no changing wiring no additional router no hub or gateway required so that makes it simple and the next step once you install these panels is installation of your app so app i mean today we buy a lot of smart devices like amazon fire stick lot of people buy google chromecast do we actually call an engineer to install this no we install it by ourselves because it's a simple registration process it is exactly the same way you need to do in our app once you install our app you need to follow a simple registration process provide your wifi ssid and password and that's it you are done to control it from across the world and if at all you are linked with amazon and google servers you can use it through voice commands and the user friendly the settings are quite user friendly nowadays we also have a lot of moods and scene settings that you can have in the app so irrespective you have looped your wiring or connected it individually to your lighting appliances and all that still you will be able to use it in a group form or in to make your different moods and scenarios as per your requirements so this is one of the illustrations that we've just shown you that how with voice commands you can do it similarly you can do it with your app you can control the different uh, devices the different lights curtains air conditions all these with your app as well as voice commands and i feel 2020 is the time in fact today the need of the r is social distancing and touch free mechanisms it's the time to encourage and ensure touch free mechanisms at workplaces at public places as at, at places like offices and all that it's quite often that we touch switchboards and different appliances at common areas by using such automation and smart devices we can really ensure touch free mechanisms and keep, can even operate these devices remotely in 2020 we have seen a lot of drastic changes in our lifestyles for corporates their room has become their own office for youngsters their room is their new hangout place where they virtually meet their friends they surf on the internet for kids for kids especially i mean young kids their room is their new new classroom wherein they have been studying online so room is the new office hangout or a classroom everyone will need and want their room to be equipped with these smart devices to control them at their fingertips or with voice commands today convenience play a vital role in today's lifestyle 
and convenience and the smart things are going to be the key to the future homes. Builders today are looking at, this, at these smart homes with a new vision. A 2 BHK now would be considered as 2.5 BHK, when in a half BHK would be considered for their client's office work. A 3 BHK would be considered as a 3.5 BHK, when in half, uh, this half BHK would again be considered for client's office work. So smart home, I believe, is going to be the key factor in all the upcoming projects. Eventually, all new homes will have the feature of monitor monitoring the electrical grids. It's time to grow, go green, go touch-free, and let's go smart. Over to you, Mr. John. Uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Girish. Uh, uh, you rightly said it, uh, the installations uh, to be uh, simple uh, so that uh, you don't need to have a complex uh, integration. Uh, of course, uh, uh, everyone is talking about uh, touch-free. Uh, so we need to have the devices, uh, devices designed for uh, touch-free solutions. And uh, the best part was that uh, half BHK, what you mentioned, I think uh, that's going to be the reality with every builder now. We had a lot of webinars with builders. I mean, this is the hot topic now. All right. So thank you so much, uh, uh, Girish. Um, so let's summarize uh, uh, the session uh, over here. Uh, COVID-19, uh, it was really a disruption. We all know that. Now the survival part is clearly over. Now it's time for the industry to rebuild mm -hmm. something new. And trust me, automation, intelligent lighting, and smart lighting is best for doing something new in emerging technology. And everyone is having their own share. Automation is not at all complex. It starts with a simple on-off sensor, which can control so many lights. Then comes the next level of automation in terms of light harvesting. And then it comes in terms of lighting controls, where you can have so many schemes and controls. And then, then it goes for little uh, luxury, which is uh, human centric. It's not a luxury nowadays, like uh, the panelist uh, was saying, it's going to be the necessity. Everything is going to be human centric. And finally, it goes towards the lighting management system. So industry is having a lot of scope for uh, intelligent uh, lighting and uh, smart lighting options. So thank you panelists uh, for uh, spending time with us today. Uh, I think we are well within time. It's 3.55. Uh, we have uh, uh, five more, five, ten minutes to address the question and answers. Uh, yes. Over yes, absolutely. Uh, so, Mr. John, you can uh, go ahead with the Q&A. We can take about five or six questions. We are fine. Okay, uh, so there is one question, I think, uh, uh, Mr. Ramki, uh, the question is uh, for you. About uh, 440, 400, how the 400 part is justified uh, with uh, IoT intelligent lighting? Uh, Ramki, I think uh, you can answer that. Uh, very interesting thing. Uh, you mentioned it post my presentation. Um, I think uh, that it, it calls for a change in complete approach. Uh, conventionally, we've been going from left to right, which is four. 40 and 400. I think now we have to look at everybody in the panel talked about the human experience, right? Uh, whether it's a human centric lighting or end of the day, human centric designs are going to play a vital role. And uh, COVID is not going to go away until uh, a cure is found to that and medicine is found to that. And we have to live with it for a long time to come. So given that situation, I think uh, uh, it, it's only apt to say that uh, this 400 part of it uh, is going to play extremely important role in giving confidence to employees, people who have to work out of offices, work out of buildings, to again return to the office, right, in a new normal, uh, without any fear of being there, right? We are now moving from a complete contact world, a handshake world, to a you know touch-free, contactless world, right? How does that happen? So, unless we are able to embrace that thing and give that confidence to people to come back, right, come back to the workplace, come back to the offices, it's not going to happen. So, uh, the fulcrum will shift. And the more focus will have to be on the human experience part of it, employee experience part of it, occupant experience part of it, uh, name it, whatever. Uh, so this is going to be the key. 
and organizations will have to do a rethink in terms of you know why it is not 440 400 we have to begin with the 400 and say that you no know, go back saying that the 40 is the real estate you will impact and then you will also look at the energy part of it which is a four right all three will coexist but the focus have to shift from the left to right all right uh, thank you ramki uh, um, and Patrick, uh, uh, there is one question for you. Uh, this is related to HCL humeric lighting uh, solution. So the question is, how HCL uh, solution work for offices working on 24 hours shift? Is it advisable or not? Um, basically, human centric lighting, um, they are researchers. Um, and again, it's orientating at uh, on the on the natural daylight. So basically we having sunlight from the morning 5 36 to 7 8 in the evening and then it's dark so our human body is basically not um, constructed for shift work uh, at all so we personally at easy lux believing that um, after the uh, after six we provide a constant uh, color temperature, and that should be a warm one, uh, 3,000, 3,500 Kelvin, um, because technically it's the time where our biological clock is telling us to sleep. So giving their brighter light, colder uh, light, can bring the, the whole biologic clock out of um, balance. And therefore, we believe for shift work in an office, um, a steady color temperature for the night shift or for the evening shifts is uh, the most um, accurate or the most applicable um, way to handle it. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, Sudeshna, next question is uh, for you. Uh, what is the difference between the wired lighting system like PoE over wireless lighting for a large office? Uh, so far, I... Uh... I just mentioned, you know, these are all protocols, uh, you know, so it's not that you adopt one protocol for one application. Uh, in the current scenario, we have seen for very large offices and especially buildings, which goes, you know, multi-floor, the wired protocol has mostly been adopted uh, because it's more robust. You need central uh, centralized control. Uh, the wireless protocols, which are currently uh, being adopted, has got limitations in terms of you know the coverage area and the reach having said that it's not that it is not uh, possible you know you probably would need multiple gateways to connect different floors so if i take a smaller space a, a wireless protocol works very very seamless if you want to go multi floors probably in the current i'm just talking you know june 2020 whatever technology is available now probably the wired proto protocol or a POE, you know, the works best. And specifically for, uh, you know, users who are very, uh, who want a lot of data, uh, where, you know, the data mining analytics, which are required in terms of occupancy, you know, and also in terms of connecting to other services, the wired uh, protocol is a preferred solution for very, very large things. But for all other areas, small, medium, and even large offices, certain areas, the wireless protocol, let's say the boardroom, you know, you want to reconfigure today a boardroom in a very large office to smaller uh, meeting rooms, you just install a wireless protocol, you don't need to do anything with the wiring and that can be adapted very easily. So it's not one against the other, you just evaluate it depending on the application. Right, uh, you, are, uh, you rightly said it. Uh... Next question is, uh, Girish, uh, for you, uh, being in the home automation segment, uh, how much importance is uh, given for intelligent lighting and smart lighting uh, in home automation segment? So definitely, lighting plays a very significant and vital role as far as automation is concerned. Lighting does not just involve, as I mentioned, it's not just about switching, it's about dimming, setting the different tones of lighting, color changing options, moods, scenes. I mean, I believe without smart lighting, a home automation is practically incomplete. You need to have motion sensors and all that to give a complete aura of smart automation. So definitely I strongly feel, feel smart lighting and intelligent lighting plays a very significant and vital role in home automation. Right, thank you. 
so there is one more question uh, divya probably this is the last question uh, uh, i think uh, we are going to address and uh, let me take the privilege to address that question myself i think it's related to uh, what uh, we are discussing now the question is how uvc light uh, would be integrated in iot solutions that's a good question i would say uh, there is a huge demand for disinfection uh, by using uvc lamps uvc uh, uv lighting uv uv light fixtures integrating uv lighting system with iot is something which everyone can look into it's as simple as uh, uh, installing a plug and play solution you can have controls and sensors which detect the human being and let the uv light off you can have combination of human centric lighting and disinfection together as a combo system when the human is present in the office human centric lighting will be delivered in absence of human being uv lighting disinfection will happen this can be incorporated to a control system very economical way so this is something uv lighting business is something everyone can look into and it can easily incorporate uh, into an uh, iot thing so this is something uh, i think these days lot of questions uh, we are getting in terms of uh, uh, incorporating uh, uv with the iot things so uh, that's all uh, for uh, today's uh, uh, session from uh, panelist side uh, once again uh, thank you uh, ramki thank you sudeshna and thank you hendrik for joining us today from hong kong and uh, thank you girish over to you divya thank you mr john and thank you once again to uh, all the panelists the last one hour was very insightful um, personally you know uh, i always heard that iot is the future but now i believe the this is the future and it's happening now so we have to look at iot and uh, again you know before we go i just want to understand a little from the attendees so i have one polling question so, rona can we have the question okay perfect uh, so we we just want to know that we uh, plan to do a series of such webinars uh, in the coming weeks and which of the below topics is is something that would interest you or you would look forward to we have led lighting products in their architectural application uh, smart and intelligent lighting like we discussed today sub sustainable and green lighting solutions and solar lighting or all of the above Perfect. Rona, can we have the answer, please? Okay. So this is great. Uh, we are definitely uh, going to come up with green lighting solutions, webinar on solar lighting, as well as architectural lighting and LED products. So we know we are doing the right thing. Once again, thank you uh, to all the panelists. Thank you to all the attendees for uh, giving us this time. uh for for everyone who wants to uh, know more about what we are doing please uh, uh, follow us on our social media handles on facebook twitter linkedin and instagram i uh, still wish that everyone uh, stay safe and everybody stay at home um in, in the next one or two days uh, you know there are more questions that will be answered by the panelists and you can follow us on our social media pages to get all your questions answered thank you everyone yeah thank you the message fam Thank you very much. Thanks Thank a lot. Thank you. Thank you.